What was the test that we call the weighing of the heart? And how could you pass it to get into the ancient Egyptian afterlife? In this video, you're going to learn what the weighing of the heart was and the five steps that the ancient Egyptians went through to reach the afterlife. Welcome to Voices of Ancient Egypt, where we demystify the words and lives of the ancient Egyptians through animated videos like this one. If you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss future videos like this one. The ancient Egyptians believed that getting to the afterlife was a difficult process that involves a lot of what seems to us like jumping through hoops. The final part of this process is what we call today the weighing of the heart. So today we're going to get into the five things that happened leading up to and during the weighing of the heart, and also how people tried to ensure that they would pass this ultimate test. So let's jump right in. Step number one, you have to pass many tests before actually getting to the weighing of the heart. Now, of course, we're picking up already after burial and the funeral, after the Ba has been released from the body. So this final judgment of the weighing of the heart comes at the end of a long, difficult journey, which included many tests of other kinds, especially tests of knowledge, such as knowing the names of gates or other beings that might try to block your way. If you didn't know the name of any of these features, you could not pass. Fortunately, this information was included in what we now call the Book of the Dead. Hopefully, these are texts that you purchased to be buried with you. Step number two, enter the Hall of Double Ma'at. Finally, after this quite frankly rather monotonous and annoying string of gates, posts, ferrymen, etc., always asking you for their names, and various demons trying to stop you along your way, you finally reach what is called the Hall of Double Ma'at, or Justice, where the gods would sit in judgment of your life and decide whether you should be admitted to the afterlife. When you arrive, Anubis, who is a god shown as a human with a jackal head, takes your hand and leads you to a large set of scales. Is this all making sense so far? If so, let me know by writing heart in the comments below. Step number three, the so-called negative confession. Now that you're in the hall, a number of gods are present, including 42 judges. To these 42 judges, you must declare a long list of bad things that you did not do, whether it be doing wrong against other people or seeking knowledge that you should not seek. This denial has been dubbed the negative confession in modern times. But that's not all. You must also recite the names of these 42 judges. At this point, you're probably thinking, not more names! But then again, you're probably too distracted by the fearsome creature on the other side of the scales to worry too much about the 42 judges. This creature is part crocodile, part lion, and part hippopotamus, and she's called the devourer, or Amamet in ancient Egyptian, which probably comes from the sound that she'll make when she eats your heart, if it doesn't measure up. Um, um, um. Step four, weighing your heart. Next, your heart is taken from your chest, where it was left during mummification precisely for this purpose, and it is put on the scales. On the opposite scale, there is a feather that symbolizes ma'at, or divine order, essentially the way things should be and the way that you should act. Anything that you did during life that was not in line with ma'at will make your heart heavier. If your heart proves to be heavier than the feather, Amamet will swallow your heart and you will have no afterlife. Game over, do not pass go, do not collect $200. However, if you could afford to do so, you will have brought with you texts that will help you pass this final test, and even an amulet that's placed over your heart during mummification that keeps your heart from testifying against you. Step 5. Entering the Afterlife after passing this judgment, which of course you did because you came prepared with the right texts, you are now considered true of voice. Congratulations! You will now be crowned with a wreath of flowers and introduced to Osiris himself 
in order to be admitted to the afterlife, where you can dwell in the field of reeds forever. So would you measure up to this test? What do you think? Would you pass or not? Are you going to end up being eaten by Amamet? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, you can also let me know on Instagram and Facebook. To learn more about ancient Egypt, click on one of the videos linked at the bottom of the screen. And if you want to dive even deeper, check out the recommended books in the video description below. If you like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and share it with all of your friends who love ancient Egypt too. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the bell so that you won't miss future videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.